పేట దుర్భ్యన్నమ సహనాభవతు సహనౌ భునక్తు సహవీర్యం కరవావహై తేజస్వి నావధీతమస్తు మా విద్విషావహై ఘరే సర్వలోకానాం పుషజే సర్వరోగానాం విధయే సర్వవిద్యానాం దక్షిణామూర్తయే నమ జ్ఞానానందమయం నిర్మల స్పరికాకృతం ఆధారం సర్వవిద్యానాం మహద్రీ ఉపాస్మహ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఎవరి మై పేపర్ ఈ కంప్లీట్లీ ఇంటర్ డిసిప్లినరీ పేపర్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈ మై ఇట్ ఈ మై ఇంటెన్షన్ టు క్లబ్ ఆల్ ది ఐడియాస్ అవైలబుల్ ఇన్ ద ఇండియన్ స్పిరిచువల్ అండ్ ఫిలసాఫికల్ సిస్టమ్స్ టు బ్రింగ్ అవుట్ ఎ మోడల్ ఆఫ్ హ్యూమన్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ అండ్ మైండ్ అండ్ దేర్ ఫంక్షన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కంప్లీట్లీ ఫ్రమ్ ద కోఆర్డినేటివ్ సైన్స్ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ వ్యూ ఆల్ ది ట్రెడిషనల్ నాలెడ్జ్ విచ్ మెనీ ఆఫ్ యూ షుడ్ హ్యావింగ్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ యూ టు పుట్ దట్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఎ బిట్ అసైడ్ విజన్ టు మీ విత్ ఎ ఫ్రెష్ మైండ్ బికాస్ ద సేమ్ వర్డ్స్ విల్ బీ said in a different sense. So, it will conflict with your understanding. So, I request you to just listen to me. At the end, you can only discuss it. Uh, debate uh, cannot be there. In the sense that discussion can be there. Now, I try to, the mean, to take the meaning of Padatha from various Indian philosophical systems and correlate them in relation to coordinate science only. And I will take the meaning of the Padadha from Vedanta, Vaisheshika, uh, Vyakarana, Yoga, etc. The study of concept of Padadha available in various Indian and relation to coordinate science using modern scientific understanding of matter and energy and their interactions will be undertaken. See, there is a very beautiful sloka, Nama Rupa Vinirmuktam Yasmin Samtishthate Jagat Sam Ahuhu Prikrutim Kachin Mayam Anye Padetracha Amin. There is a very, very uh, understanding various schools. Vedanta people say, Actually, Padatha, not actually matter in the real sense of the physics as we have seen today. It has a technical sense in the cognitive science. Padatha is the raw material used to construct a cognition. The Vedanta people say it is Maya which constructs the cognition and communication. Vaisheshika and Nyaya people say they are unknown and Yoga and Sanksha people say it is Prakriti. Even though they, and I take the Brahma Jnana, Ratma Jnana, Advaita philosophy point of view and construct my theory of cognition and communication. Now, next. In the Padatha, how various systems have defined, Brahma Jnana defines Nama Bhava Vasana Rahita Vastuhu Padatha. నామ భావ వాసనార్హిత వస్తు వస్తువు పదార్థ దట్ ఈస్ బ్రహ్మ పదార్థ పదార్థ యాసౌజుల్ వైశేష్ స్కూల్ యాజ్ ద్రవ్య గుణ కర్మ సామాన్య విషయ సమవాయ అనదర్ కమ్స్ ది అభావ సప్త పదార్థ అండ్ న్యాయ ఉచ్ ఈజ్ ప్రమాణ అర్ధపరీక్షణం ఇట్ హాజ్ నెక్స్ట్ లైన్ ఇట్ హాజ్ సిక్స్టీన్ సిక్స్టీన్ పదార్థాస్ అండ్ సాంఖ్యయోగ హ్యాజ్ ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ పదార్థాస్ యాక్చువల్లీ తమ్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఎనర్జీ ఫార్మ్స్ సో ఫైవ్ యూ కెన్ సీ దట్ అండ్ ఉత్తర మీమాంసార్ వేదాంత ఇట్ సేస్ ది ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ ఫ్రమ్ సాంఖ్య అండ్ వన్ మోర్ దట్ ఈ నజింగ్ బై కాన్షియస్ అండ్ అవేర్నెస్ దట్ ఈస్ ద ట్వంటీ ఫిఫ్త్ దిస్ ఈస్ హౌ ది పదార్థ వరల్డ్ ఈజ్ only from the cognitive science point of view. And in this, I want to tell you, next slide. Ah, sorry, sorry. just before one. Uh, this Vyakarana also talked about Padarthas. Uh, Dr. Prasad is here. That is Jati Guna Kriya Adrucha. And all these talk about only cognitive science. Even though they used uh, 
the world padartha the senses are like this next uh, one more thing i want to tell you in the system yoga men vyaya system gives the validity of the cognition through pramanas we can know the validity of the cognition vaisheshika talks about the construction of the cognition and uh, sankhya analyzes the cognition into 24 parts and vedanta also into 24 plus 1 25 parts similarly uh, the vyakarana part that comes to patanjali shabdavarma siddhanta uh, that is also that four pradarthas but the additional also there bhartruvari vakyapadiyam you find para pashanti machama vaikhari also and one more thing i want to tell you the same mind we use to cognize the physical world around us and also the language efficiency the same mind we use so uh, the cognition various six systems of philosophy i personally feel including buddhism jainism and other populations they supplement and complement each other in in in, in the sense of cognitive science and it is better to take the uh, useful information from all the systems and then construct a model of human consciousness and cognition and communication and uh, i have taken the concepts from upanishads vedanta jnana advaita philosophy shabdarshanas vayandarshanas abhyam siddhanta modern science and uh, i propose a brain wave modulation demodulation process of human mental functions next the nature of human consciousness consists of the actually maya and atma are the ingredients of uh, human consciousness uh, i have given a physical optics analogy where maya is called the virtual energy see the actual energy is the chitta energy maya is called chidabhasa chidabhasa means reflection of chitta the same maya actually the most misunderstood word in the advaita philosophy is maya maya is ya ma sa maya which doesn't exist is maya but another very good definition is there yaya asantam pasyati sa maya through which we find all the material world is maya and the and human mind is sourced from atman human mental functions are forward and reversible transformations of maya and the the word vivartanam is a very beautiful word from the advaita philosophy vivartanam is tirudhana purudhanamita vartanam vivartanam forward and backward reversible becoming reversible becoming and the same thing we can uh, equate with the present day modulation demodulation of radio waves which bring us the broadcast the telecast the webcast all in that the carrier wave is called the radio wave whose amplitude all phase all frequency are modulated in accordance with the information that is to be broadcast telecast or webcast similarly atman is proposed as a bio oscillator which is a result of the breathing process and there is a saying shrastha prana ha atman ha tanu and if i say atman is a physical entity many may not be able to agree but this is my proposition the sense understanding the uh, uh, scriptures and definitely this is a subject of discussion so uh, the breathing process from that energy is released that release that release energy i take as maya sorry uh, atman and that energy is reflected in the medha and becomes maya and that is virtual virtual is unreal unreal is two means one is just as in the mirror we have a reflection which is unreal and unreal is, the word is mithya mithya is it is unreal at the same time it exists for some time and nationally it will not be there these two definitions can be given to mithya so these things and vivartanam this maya actually a bifurcates into divya shakti and swara shakti divya shakti takes care of the gnana and swara shakti takes care of the mechanical components and as you know mind is a combined operation of atma maya antakarnas manobuddhi chitta ahankaras and 
action, uh, jnana indriyas and karma indriyas. All this together is the function of the mind. And the mind is source of the Atman, the chit energy. The chit energy, when reflected in the Maitha, is called Chidabhasa or Maya. The same thing as Pranavam or Sparta. Sparta is the, uh, Sparta is the word coined by the Vyakarna of Patanjali. And that is, uh, later, uh, expanded by Bhartruhari. There is a very good, good book by name Vakyapadiyam. Vakyapadiyam by Bhartruhari. It talks about all the language acquisition and communication process. Please. Next. Okay, this is... Uh, I, I request you to Purnam Adaha, Purnam Idam, Purnam, Purnam Nujite, Purnasya, Purnam Adaha, Purnam Nujite, but when Idam, Adaha and Idam. Actually, Adaha and Idam are very important words. And uh, we have two states of mind, Advaita and Dvaita states of mind, in which you have only Aham, Ahaha, it is Advaita state of mind, when, you, when the perception of Idam also takes place. Idam is also known as Jagat. Idam is also known as Jagat. Next one. Okay, I have given the various Upanishadic uh, Vakyas in a different way. I will keep all those. Skip, skip. Just uh, the term I denotes the human consciousness. I is not a term denoting any of the individual, individual's body, self consciousness, or social state, etc. I is the unoccupied awareness in the individual in the Jagra Shushupti state when peace, bliss, etc. I is not a person, thought, sense, or an experience. It's only pure consciousness. Next. 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 <coughs> Okay, this actually the Atma, this I told you, the bio oscillator, the waves are in the infrasonic range. If the wavelength is below 20 hertz, it is called infrasonic. And it is observed that we have brain waves. Brain waves are in the range of uh, 5, okay. You see, these, we can correspond, these are the actually the brain waves available to us, alpha, beta, uh, theta and delta. These can be correlated with the Jagrat Shushupti, Shushupti, Jagrat and Swapna states of the mind. And in, uh, we have three types of drishti called Vishranta drishti, Antarmukha drishti and Bahimukha drishti. If the awareness is within, it is Antarmukha drishti. If it is for without physical world, it is Bahimukha drishti. And when only mind is absent, then drishti is Atma drishti, then we call Vishranta drishti. So these things are corresponded to these uh, four states where brain waves will be there. And if you see there, they are below 20 hertz except for uh, beta waves. Beta waves are the time when uh, Cognition and communication are taking place. And in Sushupti, Sushupti is actually the state of mind when no, no thoughts occur, no experiences come to the uh, awareness. So the frequency is minimum and also Jagra Sushupti. So, next. Next, next. 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 Okay. Er, le, last one. Earlier one. Earlier one. See, this Jagat word I already told you. Brahma Jagat, Jagat Mijja, Jeevo Brahma Yeva Na Aparaha. Sat means Atman. Sat actually is a present continuous form of the verb Asdhatu. Asdhatu present continuous form is Sat. And the present continuous form of the verb Jig is Jagat. Present Ganges form of the neutral general, Sat and Jagat. And Jagat is a Adhyasa Vava Sat. Jagat is a Adhyasa Vava Sat. And Jagat is nothing but the Idam in dynamic form. Idam in static form is called Prapancham, that is Asti Bhati Priyam, Namin Rupancha Amsha Panchakam, Ajat Priyam Brahma Rupam, Satodhuvam Jagat Rupam. So, Jagat is nothing but a modified 
चित्त एनर्जी मॉडिफाइड चित्त एनर्जी में दिमाग माया मॉडिफाइड माया माया ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन फॉरवर्ड एंड रिवर्स डायरेक्शन इज ह्यूमन कोऑर्डिनेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन नेक्स्ट 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 ओके फ्रॉम गायत्री मंत्र एनालाइज सेवन स्टेट्स ऑफ सेवन क्वारेंट स्टेट्स नेक्स्ट 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 एंड फ्रॉम बैलेंस ऑफ एनर्जी थ्री फाइव फंक्शनल स्टेट्स ऑफ द माइंड नेक्स्ट एंड फ्रॉम सब्जेक्ट सिद्धांत फोर मोड्स ऑफ लैंग्वेज एक्विशन कम्युनिकेशन दे आर परा पश्चिम की मजमान वैखरी एंड यू सी एंड वेन आई एम स्पीकिंग दिस परा इज नथिंग बट अवेयरनेस इन द अवेयरनेस यू हैव वैखरी वैखरी इज द वर्ब फॉर्म मध्यमा इज द सेंटेंस फॉर्म वैखरी इज द अक्टरेंस द सेंटेंस इज ट्रांसफॉर्मड आर ट्रांसड्यूस्ड When it is a thought form, it is electrochemical energy. When it is transduced, form is changed. It becomes mechanical energy. Mechanical sound is a mechanical energy. So that is how I am speaking. From my understanding, it becomes a sentence, and the effort in you it comes as sound form. It becomes a sentence, and you understand it. So this is the scheme of uh, understanding of the human mind or language. Next, and one more thing I want to tell you. Brahma Jnana is the basis for both Vedanta and Sabdharma Siddhanta. Both agreed about the Atman or Brahman, and both use the word Vivatanam. Uh, okay, roughly, I, this this actually concludes or uh, consolidates what I still now talked. In the speaker, it is a modulation forward direction. ब्रह्मा सीधा भाषा एंड अंतकरणास कर्मेंद्रियानी ज्ञानेंद्रियानी एंड इन बोर्ड द केसेस विवर्तनम इज द कॉमन फीचर एंड द सेम माया इन व्याकरण इज कॉल्ड स्पोटा द सेम माया इज कॉल्ड प्रणवम एंड सो इफ आई से दिस मैन सो ऑल आर द सेम एनर्जी the infrasonic energy of the brain waves and one should know from where the brain waves are coming i personally think they are coming from the the nothing but the manifestations of the vibration of the uh, oscillator that we call atma which is result of the breathing process okay thank you the paper is open for questions yeah sir Yes, but very briefly because of quantity of time, I will say that you have mentioned about Maya. I think Maya is simply a statement of fact. I know you are Brahman, but I am seeing you and Mr. So and So. This is Maya. See, I already told you, Maya is nothing but a mental energy, yes, reflected yes. mental energy. Yes, I think it is only. A, I know you are Brahman, but I am seeing you as. Sir, I already told you this is only from the cognitive point of view, where I take only the cognitive perspective and not necessarily other senses, because we don't end anywhere. Because this perception is entirely different, and the traditional understanding may not be of any aid unless we the focus is on this. So, Maya is nothing but the mental energy. He is not only Brahma, but also Rama Brahma. <laughs> No, but you see, I have a book in me which deals with all the. Sir, that you have I tell you one thing: the same three books called Upanishads, Brahma Sutra, and Bhagavad Gita, they are called the Prasthanatraya. They are uh, commented differently by different people. Advaita, Dvaita, Vishistha Dvaita, same books. How can be different? Dvaita and Advaita are uh, they are conflict with each other. How they can be a conflicting thing in the same book? So I tell you, it is the perception of the individual which gives us the thing. Perception is always it can be different. And in India, it is a tradition that nobody cares for earlier people. He proposes his own theory. People take it or don't take it. Uh, what I mean by is this. I am giving the uh, I am giving the example of Advaita, Vishistha Advaita, and Dvaita. We also have Sattva Dvaita. So nobody. What he feels, whatever he understands, not feels. Whatever he understands, he proposes. Others may agree, may not agree, because Brahmana, Manikatam. Listen, scholars have 
various various perceptions my perception will not be agreed by others the only thing is why i am telling is this model i am going to propose and if there is a field called artificial intelligence where natural language comprehension is a field if they can take this model of mine this will have some significance and so only in the sense i was just referring to a book by because other books may not be of use to me by a practicing musician about what is the concept of nas vedic sound self discourse what and all these things that you are referring to all these can be that explained beautifully by a practicing musician sir i already told you perceptions will differ please now with that and with my little about physics that i studied and i think i don't Is what quoted as Shankara, it is not Brahma Sat, it is Brahma Satyam. Not Sat, please, please, please. It is Sat, it is Sat. That's why I tell you. Sat, Sat is a present continuous form of the verb Asdhatu. It is Sat, it is Sat. It is Sat. Sat is Sat. I think there is a difference between Sat and Satyam, and it is quoted. I think all the followers of Sat. That's that's why in the in the beginning I told no, no. in the beginning. And, No, no, Brahma Sat. Please also, no. No, Brahma Sat. And again, I am telling you, Sat is the present continuous form of the verb Basudha. Is it not? Is it okay? And, no, no. What I mean to say, it is Sat. It is Sat. I will give you. Sir, I think that the point is that the point is that. It is Sat Chitta Ananda. It is Sat Chitta Ananda. You, 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 yeah, Sat Chitta and Ananda. But oh, in your opinion, according to you, tell me what is the difference between Satya and Sat? See, I tell you. Swaka is the Anushtup Swaka. That is the syllable. Yes, I tell you. That is the Prasadi also. Brahma Satya, Jagat Mithya, Brahma Eva Naapara. Brahma Sat, please. Again, I tell you. Sachitananda, Sachitananda, you, you have Sat Chitta Nanda, which are translated as being pure consciousness and bliss. Pure consciousness and bliss, uh, uh, being pure consciousness and bliss, and uh, Atman is present in us. It is making us to have all the cognitive and communication abilities. Sat. Takes care of our idea of our existence. Chit takes care of all our knowledge. Bliss takes care of all our experiences. So, Atman has one, giving us three different. But if you define what is Satyam, what is Sat? Sat. The world is Sat. It is not Satyam. Okay. What is means Satyam? What is means Satyam? Satyam has many meanings. And one more thing, one more thing. In Gayatri Mantra, in Gayatri Mantra, it is such a loka. So I, I already told you. Okay. See, I don't expect you to agree with my this thing. I want you only to present it my my perception. And I also in the beginning itself I told many of you who have your own understanding may not agree with what I am saying. Didn't I say that first? I I, I said I said because I know I know all this. I know all this. Okay, thank you. We all agree to disagree. In fact, uh, Madhva says uh, all all of us know that the Mahavakya is Tattva Masi, but Madhva takes it to be Atattva Masi because he had the liberty to say that. So let uh, Mr. Rama Brahman have the liberty to. Uh, you will uh, give because, it, uh, you know, no, to him. Because you said it is uh, uh, Tattva Masi, it is Tatt. He is not. That is Sat, please. That is Tat, and it is Sat. No, no, no. I am not. No, no, no. I am not correlating both. I am only. No, you are. You are. You are not. You are not correlating. I am correlating. Okay, okay. You are not correlating. I am correlating. No, no. Sat is Tat, and one more thing. Atman okay. is a neutral general word. Atman is a neutral general. And you know, Atma, Atma, or Atma, na. Atman is a neutral general word. No, no. And Atman no, no. for that word, the verb is Sat. Okay, fine. Now we will we will uh, end this uh, discussion because it is never ending. Therefore, we will pass on to the next paper. We thank Professor Ramabrahman for his views.
everybody is entitled to have his or her own opinion. Yes, but, uh, I, 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 yes. I know, I know all this. Okay. We will uh, leave it to him and the others who are interested can have a discussion with him well outside the conference hall. Now we will go on to the next paper by Mr. Jay Prakash. Be blessed by the Divine Power. Be blessed by the Divine Power. I have 15 minutes to talk to make it all to be at a receptive. So I want to spend one minute for uh, to make our mind reflective. Just uh, keep my words. Just close your words then follow my words. Now? Yeah. Please try. Yeah. Hello? Is it correct? Is it? Slightly better? Yeah. The atmosphere around us is being purified by the divine power. The atmosphere around us is being purified by the divine power. The divine power enters your body or mind. We are being purified and blessed. By the grace of the divine power, may protect us, guide us, lead us day and night all along our life. Thank you. My topic here is analogy of mind with computer, Veda 3 philosophy perspective. I am doing a PhD program in Yoga for Human Excellence, Barbara University, Coimbatore. Next. Let me start with the uh, uh, statement of questions right away. Next. What inspired man to innovate a computer? So there is an inspiration for most of the things. Birds are inspiration for aeroplane. Echo is the inspiration for radio. I is the inspiration for camera. So in this I am representing a both field is a philosophy and as well as a computer. I have a question. What inspires a man to innovate a computer? This is the first question. Next. Yeah, as a uh, chair said, mind, let us analyze it further. What are the components of mind? Next. Is it mind a system? Next. What is the analogy of mind? Next. Is a man an organic computer? So these are all the few questions I have taken for the research. As generally said, uh, we can compare with man with uh, mind as the computer. Let us uh, take it further on this. Next. So what is the methodology I have used to address my research question? Next. System perspective. System is a a general body of the where which connects both science and the philosophy. Next. It's a comparative, analytical, interdisciplinary research. Logical and survey method. Both logical conclusion and survey method means that is, uh, there are two sets of uh, questions I have taken. Those who have taken the meditation, they understand the concepts. Those who are not understand the concept. Next. Next. And also a future idea will be taken, this is in the object oriented analysis perspective. Good. As per Vedatri Magarishi, when he is defining organism to differentiate between animate and inanimate things, he told there are eight things as required between the difference between animate and inanimate things. What are they? He told the eight things are body, senses, brain, mind, life force, biomagnetism, genetic center and soul. These eight things are required. If any one of the thing is absent, then we can call it as the inorganic. If all the things are present, it works, then we can consider as the organic. This gives a very important clue to the Sign, uh, mean, to me to understand as a mind as a system because as per the system interconnected components working together as a system if anyone is not uh, if anyone is not working it's absent the whole output will not be there so this is here where I, I got the hint clue next so this is uh, how mind works related with the six I mean with all the components together 
So when we are seeing an object, first it is reflecting in our mind. So whatever may be the big things, the conception of the biomagnetism, it is taken into our eye. Then it goes to our brain as a dot. Then as a wave, it is storing in a biomagnetism. Then it goes to the genetic center as a uh, as a dot. A kind of an, it's an imprint is taking place. So this way, you no, know, most of the components are interlinked here. Next. What is analogy? See, analogy means knowing unknown things through the known things. Here, I am presenting uh, mine from the computer's perspective because we are all know about some about the computer. From computer, we can know about the unknown things of the mind. Or if you know the mind, then you can understand about the computer. Next. See here, this is the important chart here. One is the eight components of the mind is listed. Body, senses, brain, mind, life force, biomagnetism, genetic center and soul. The comparison, this is the nearest analogy of the mind as Suchar said is a uh, computer is a mind. So that here in the computer the body can be compared it as a cabinet. Senses as a peripherals, brain as a display, mind as a software, life force as the power supply, Biomagnetism is the connecting mechanism. Genetic center is the hard disk. Soul is the processor. So there are certain things you may agree, you may not be agree. It's a hypothesis. So in this theory, I'm going to apply this hypothesis to give validated uh, logical reason as well as the survey and questionnaire method how far this uh, logical mind will be compared with the computer. So one thing I like to highlight here due to time, the soul as a processor. Here I connected soul as the processor, the main reason that the keyword is a generation. As you know, as per the Moore's law, in chip, once in 18 months, the capacity of the IC chip will be doubled. From 1919 onwards, up to the time, the IC chip uh, capacity has been increased. So, as we know that now, now we have a dual core, then earlier it was Pentium series, 486, 386, 286, 186, then uh, like that there was uh, every 18 months uh, uh, capacity of the microchip was increased. So, this is we can compare with the soul. So, the present generation we have uh, uh, experiences, uh, we have certain knowledge. So, if the knowledge is better than the previous generation, definitely the next generation will be more knowledge than us. So here the comparison for the processor is a soul. Next. So in further, a man has got both uh, hard, hardware software, that is physical and logical. The physical things can be understood as a body, senses, brain, the problem will be the logical side. So the bo logical side be classified as the five things, that is mind, life force, biomagnetism, genetic center and soul. Next. So here is a key point. So physical point can be understand. How to understand the logical point? That is where the ancient wisdom of yoga practices is comes to a handy. So because the theme is to understand the ancient wisdom with connecting with the modern world. So the logical parts of the mind can be understand from the ancient wisdom of the yoga practices. So here the mind can be understand from the the yoga practices of agna meditation, otherwise it is called a pituitary meditation. The life force can be understood from the duriya meditation, otherwise it is called a pineal meditation. The maya magnetism, mirror meditation, genetic muladhara meditation, soul introspection. See, these all the meditation is given by the Vedatri Trimagarishi. So, anyone who can able to practice this meditation, they can able to understand the uh, they can discover this logical components of the mind. Next. So here, the scope of the meditation and this research is related with the structural aspect. But to understand the system, there are two things to be seen. One is the structure, another is the behavior. The research paper is focused on the structure. Behavior is deals with the psychology point of view. This is, we are not discussing the psychology, only the structural part. And second thing is, when I am... Uh, doing for research on the object oriented method, only the f selected few attributes only I have selected. Next. So the key findings. Mind was an inspiration for creating computer. Very well, the lot of references can be given. We can given the references from the father of the computing, Alan Turing. 
because in his research he was always discussed lot of things about the mind and he told that he was uh, got lot of clues from the how mind works from which he has taken next then we can each element as a object we can leave for the further investigation then next mind as a system next mind is an organic human computer next the conclusion here we can give it is before computer machine was invented man was called computer friends we are now when we are seeing a computer we seeing as an object but before 1940 the person is called computer because the person who does the calculating is called a computer this is very well in all the literature you can see it i have given a references also uh, computation he was doing a calculations but later on only now it was seen as the machine perspective the analogy we can give it is uh, no now the teller in a bank the teller was there now it is converting is a automatic teller machine the whatever the teller was doing now it is doing by the uh, teller machine next so through analogy we can understand about the mind from computer the ancient wisdom of yoga will help the logical parts of the mind okay so what is the uh, in the research we'll get it see when i was dealing with the computer for many years it's a hardware part of it at one point of time i understand that what are the principle applied to the computer it's applied to me the uh, imprinting and reflecting at all so one point of time i understand that the that is a organic that is a inorganic computer i myself was a organic computer so the statement of vedatri madhurishi says man is a organic human computer that can very well can be proved so thank you thank you very much the paper is open for discussion yes, sir may i comment on uh. your work it was an excellent uh, effort i would say this is for the first time when i have listened you the mic at your profile this is the first time when i have listened a person putting out mind also as an apparatus yes i mean earlier we thought it was a manifestation which was beyond our mechanical way of working but now you are trying to bring out the concept of mind also in the form of an instrument but i noticed that in your content it was written that mind depends on the soul yes and if the soul is there hmm. then we have first to capture the soul then only we will be able to make out a machine for it so now the yeah. soul is not being captured by us this is the problem so uh, i want to say these are all the eight internet uh, interlink interconnected components through the yoga practices you can able to easily understand the attributes of all the eight components but if you are using those traditional methods okay then you will not be able to go into the present day computational techniques of the computers so we can go about it you, you follow you see it becomes a personal experience okay mm. personal experience that if i do some breathing exercises if i think it about that way some persons are very nice and we have got uh, effect of food and other things coming up environment and all those things but you are bringing out the eight components mm. and those eight components this is the right way of doing science mm. but the point was the greatest difficulty is that soul is to be captured and we have to control it we have to send the soul this way or that way and if you cannot control that then you have difficulty in putting out in the mechanical so process. here this is how to do that yeah that's what as per vedatri magrishi life force is the extension of uh, mind is the extension of life force mind is the extension of life force the difference between the life force and soul is the life force is only the particle the imprinted on the life force is soul so in a computer perspective it is consider as a life force it have a random only memory raw memory will be there in in the life force particle on this analogy you can able to understand if you personally if you ask me i can explain about it any other question please any other question yeah very small observation in continuation of what professor bajaj said hmm. i think mind is a very fine material object yeah
This it will be observed after it passes through the state or if it will not be observed. If it will be observed, it will be the particles. If it knows that the psychic has switched on the, uh, the detectors, then it goes into the abstract mathematical state and it dies from the state and passes through both the states at the same time without dividing itself. So there is nothing which is animate and inanimate. The animate inanimate distinction is uh, at a very gross level. I, the other day I referred to Professor J.C. Bose. Please Bush. brief your question. Maybe please my, brief your question. My question, not a question, it is just a suggestion. You please go beyond mind, transcend mind, go to the intellectual level and then beyond the intellect you will have like quantum entanglement and that is why we are, after we are hell-bent on creating quantum computers. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. See, here the thing is, when I am differentiating mind with the life force, you say that the two different things, that's for understanding. But in the meditation in a Guriya, there is no mind at all. It is only a life force. Thank you. But sir, I would like to comment this thing. Uh, it is not a question. You have made a very wonderful experiment and wonderful new ideas and I am quite sure you will be getting success in this. Okay. Thank it's you. It's a life thing, a wonderful way in which he is moving and I am quite sure we will have in a mind apparatus also one day from you. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do, you, one second. do you foresee a time when man can create mind? Yes, it is possible. I like, I like to add a little yeah, yeah. over that. Mind is made by the divine, by computer, but computer is made by man. <laughs> So, it is incomparable. To some extent we can go. Beyond that, only the mind is to understand, become consciousness with that, then we can proceed further. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jai Prakash. Yeah. Uh, actually, this is my major project on mind. So, <laughs> so I want to just ask one thing. Uh, as I think, mind is only a concept, first thing, nothing else. Sec uh, second thing is that I want to ask uh, the scholar, uh, do you consider that the mind is a different from the brain or mind is a man as we have find in the scriptures that is a similar or slightly different, or if it's different, then there is no existence of mind as the scientist think. This is like, yeah. Here I want to say, here is, when I say mind, people are thinking that as a single entity. It is not a single entity at all. It is network of eight components together. It is biomagnetic wave. To understand that, I'll give you one demonstration here. Mind is a marvelous, wonderful, imperceptible phenomena. What is imperceptible? It is that we cannot be able to sense it. Here, in this open auditorium, I will give you an open question here. If anybody in this hall who says that, who doesn't have a mind, please raise your right hand. In this auditorium, anybody who says, who doesn't have a mind, Please raise your right hand. So nobody is raising their right hand. It means what? Everybody is having a mind. Everybody is having a mind, but when we ask you to discuss about what is mind, nobody is able to explain. It is there, but they are not able to express it. To express it, there are four principles. It is there which is not able to express it. Those subjects are mind, life force, magnetism and the God. These are all imperceptible. It is that we cannot be able to sense us by the, uh, uh, perceptible by the senses. It is extraordinary lengthy dealing by the philosophy. This is scientifically dealing with the Veda through philosophy. Now that it is a more information I can able to give you. Thank you, Yes, sir. We will pass on to the next paper. Give him a big hand. Uh, the next paper is by Walha Vayaham, Walha Vayamran, Guru Vetunen, be blessed by divine power. 
My title is Purification of Mind, Overview of the Technique Suggested by Vedatri Magrisi. Next. Vedatri Magrisi, just a profile. His name is Vedatri Magrisi. Born, uh, place, uh, proposed system is Simplified Kundalini Yoga. Organization is World Community Service Center. Written number of book 70. He wrote poems nearly 2000. Samadhi at 28.3.2006. In early age, he asked, what is God, what is life, what is body in the world? The search to find this answer as well as to further his God in life led him into various fields of India world. Several years of intense meditation and introspection brought him to full enlightenment and the age of 35. Next. In Padanjali's ancient yoga sutras, Padanjali's define yoga as yoga siddha vidhi nirodhaga. The cessation of the function of the mind is called yoga. How can we set the function of mind? It is by introverting the mind. Such an introverting is always obstructed by the six malicious temperaments. That is why Magarisi in his methodology had given a good place to maneuver the bad temperaments. Here six malicious means that is greediness, anger, miserliness, immoral sexual passion, vanity and vengeance. Next. I and mine are a strange couple. This unethical immoral couple eats six lowly children. They are greediness, anger, miserliness and immoral sexual passion and vanity and vengeance. Here we see greediness means Indiscipline, unregulated desire. That means there is no satisfaction in our life. Then anger. When prohibitive forces try to stop the manifestation of desires. That means there is anger is destructive of all our forces. Misalignance means material desire and profiting the desired materials from others' view. And immoral sexual passion means sexual behavior. Vanity means Intelligence in this year, wealth, power, fame, leading to look up and look down upon people. Vengeance means waiting for a chance to let out the stored anger. Next. The monoroing of big six bad qualities. These bad temperaments are with everyone but with a difference. This can be rectified and made good. Greediness has changed to be contentment and anger should change to be a tolerance and miscellaneous be changed to the charity and immoral sexual behavior to change as chastity. Vanity should be changed as equality and vengeance should be a change to a pardon. That means forgiveness. Next. If we not rectify these six bad temperaments, we can get a five sinful activities that is telling lies, stealing, murder, gambling and adultery that means unnatural sexual behavior. Next. The, in order to stop the revile, we should. Next. In our sky system, introspection is classified into five subjects that is analysis of thought, moralization of desire, Neutralization of anger, eradication of worries and self-realization are who am I? Next. For example, here we can take analysis of thought. When a thought gets processed, we should try to find out the why of the thought and the results of the thought. This is called the exercise of analysis of thoughts. These are six thought generating factors as need, Habits, circumstances induced by others, hereditary and divinity. Need means hunger, what we need that fulfill or not. We should go in this way and habit, repeatedly doing something. If I want to take some coffee or tea in the morning, there should be a newspaper I expect. These are called habits, circumstances according to situation it's good or bad induced by others impact of other thoughts can up, act upon us hereditary unfulfilled desires of procedures passed to next generation 
divinity, divine power to society. The another example, next. Anger is a great destructive force at all levels. Obstacles to disease cause anger. Anger spoils and mind and body. Training to resist anger will make one an apotheosis of mankind. Tolerance blossoms and vengeance disappears. Within the family, it spoils the peace or happiness of the entire family. For all these acts, anger is the only reason. Anger is an inborn. It cannot be totally eradicated but be neutralized through the practice. Tolerance, adjustment and sacrifice helps us peace and harmony in day-to-day -day life. No anger is no worry and no vengeance. Next. By the conclusion, Vedatri Maharishi beautifully outlines the above principles which make the human life virtuous, peaceful and blissful. In the way of principal progress, mind gets refurbished. The refurbished mind induces only good deeds. All these processes will lead to understand the eternal wisdom and the oneness of divinity. These ruins, once the temperaments are eradicated from the mind and it gradually leads to the family, the society and the entire world. For your kind reference, I want to share with one incident in my life. I get a good opportunity to eradicate my anger from my son. When he was studying in final exam, the subject of physics, he answered my questions for two hours. At the same time, when asked the question, he answered and missed the one keyword. Then I asked him to replay the answer again. Within a second, he got angry with me and shouted at me and he told, get lost away from me. I got tears with my eye and just to keep silence for one hour. Then he saw my behavior and he got so many satisfied. Now he is studying in CAT at Koyamathur and he got 197 marks, about 200 in physics and now he is placed in a software company with good salary. Thank you very much. Any questions? Can I ask? Yeah. Madam, it was wonderful, at least the last part of your story. Yes. Sir. And we learn actually everything from our own behavior, how the things are moving. This is known as the book of life. Okay, sir. That means what we do and how you achieve. So as a mother, you have succeeded. We would like to know what was the possible reason for this kind of change in the behavior of the child. How he could change it. How your tears could make it, and you did not become angry. Yes, sir. In this he was stout and took his book and uh, face no, to my. This is very common yeah. <laughs> in this age. We know it. But what happened? Could you explain? By doing you? meditation, and we blessed you, our son, sir. I mean, because you remained silent. Or yes, sir, my, myself, I kept silence. Ah, that's why I think you could make out. Yes, so we sir. should explain it. I think in terms of uh, neurosciences and like that. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. I think we can close the discussion. We have just had enough time for the last paper. Uh, that is why Mr. Satyamurthy, I call upon Mr. Satyamurthy to give his paper. Now, my dear friends, uh, give me her on a holy mission of providing some ideas about the knowledge of Vedadri Maharshi, bequeathed about the concept of yoga for human excellence for most of the posterity. Those people who are in the system, they know about Vedadri Maharshi. Actually, I am a person who had been entered into this particular system just four years back. I try to understand the system of Vedadri Maharshi. I did not see him. I could not speak to him. And only the secondary sources are available for me. 
in such a situation he has given such a beautiful knowledge of understanding the mankind and universe put together and which he has called as yoga for human excellence and yoga for modern age because this is a seminar paper there are certain limitations this is like giving a stamp size photograph in seminar paper for this methodology i basically followed the books written by vedadri maharshi some books like karma yoga unified force yoga for modern age and also my base has come not to understand maharshi directly but there is a concept in bhagavad gita ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha ya pashyati sapashyati sankhya and yoga are one and the same who can see can only understand secondly same bhagavad gita says yak sthanam sankhya sankhya prapyate sthanam tad yoga yar bigamyate which have already achieved a position through sankhya you can try to achieve it through you can cross through yoga so that means you are getting a particular position which have already achieved through this particular yoga technique so then i try to understand this yoga for human excellence for this study i provide you a, a brief position man is the center for the situation and you take it as him as a center point and man is having a horizontal vision the individual the family the society the world and the nature and the man is an internal vision into his body from anamaya kosha to anandamaya kosha and para human body there is some more state there is niradhara sthiti so in the yoga will be having four types of characters one is anushthana another is sampradaya another is siddhanta another is tattva in the same way maharshi system is also having these four anushthana is created by maharshi it includes the simplified kundalini yoga meditations kaya kalpa all these things are a part of anushthana and he is provided a sampradaya on the basis of siddha tradition shiva advaita tradition and he had provided as a theory which is called as self transformation theory of the individual society and the universe too and his basic tattva is monism advaita so i try to understand maharshi in terms of sankhya philosophy because when he has told yoga and sankhya are one and the same how maharshi has also exhibiting the identity of sankhya in his observations so for that i have taken three important bases the first one is the concept of self transformation what is self transformation one transforming himself into something as such so this is the first concept maharshi has identified this is quite different from evolution and for this i will give two examples one is called as pindanyaya another is called as andanyaya in pindanyaya the human fortress will be exhibiting itself into many all the hands legs eyes ears all parts of different bodies with different characters different functions they are all evolving from the same core the origin is one the functions are many they appear to be many it is what is called as self transformation that is what is called as pindanyaya in the same way there is andanyaya if you look at a egg the egg will be looking like for a bird or for a snake or for a crocodile but from the same egg you are getting different things so both these things are taken into consideration by vedadri maharshi and he understood it to be in eschatological and axiological methodology to be what is called as self transformation for pindanyaya and mutation for andanyaya so this is a very classic example and actually this pindanyaya and andanyaya when we have observed it is nothing but what is called as modification vikara vikara of the mola prakriti and what is mola prakriti if mola prakriti is being this particular type of vikaras the tanmatras the tadbhav panchabhutas all these things are very much discussed by maharshi also 
So as such, Maharishi is basically in Sankhya methodology. He wanted to understand the true knowledge. So I have told you, I have drawn two things. One is from individual to family, family to society, society to world, world to nature. This entire thing is characterized by, conducted by one event, what is called as karma. And from individual to the consciousness, it is conducted by intellect. So karma and intellect. If you cross that particular level of consciousness, you will be entering into one more place where his vairagya will be working out. So the vairagya, chetana, karma, put together, will be forming together. If we put them together in a basic way, rational way, in our regular lives, it becomes what is called as yoga for human excellence. That is the basic identity. And then, why I have called for this particular Sankhya philosophy? Because, samyaka khyata bhi sankhyam. Because generally the word Sankhya is taken to be the tadhita of Sankhya. Most of the people, Sankhya Sabhavam Sankhya. No, not at all. It is Samyakhya to be the Sankhyam. It is very much known through these so many things. The Tantvas, 24 Tattvas, which are identified. And there were 24 Tattva is Malaprakriti. 25th Tattva is what, what is that of uh, Purusha? Who is that Purusha? So, Yak Sankhya Prapyade Sanam Tad Yoga Rebikam Yayade. When you are already a Purusha, how you can become Purusha here? This is the concept. And for this, I am basically understanding one karika from Ishwara Krishna. And that karika of Ishwara Krishna is very clearly saying one important phenomena that Purusha is nothing but na prakriti hi na vikruti purushaha. So he is not a prakriti nor vikruti. So if you understand that it is derived entering from Mughala prakriti, the Mughala prakriti is not purusha. If you understand this entire to be a modification, the intellect is not purusha, the karma is not purusha, the chetana is not purusha, the chitbhava itself is not purusha. Then what it is? It is the ultimate phenomena wherein he has identified to be a conceptual identity wherein Yuga, uh, yuga pravurtescha. The yuga tra- there are three gunas. The three gunas are functioning at a time. When the three gunas are uh, functioning at a time, yuga pravurtescha, purusha bahutvam siddham. This is what the karika says. So this purusha bahutvam siddham, that means the ready-made human- humanity. Man is many in ready-made. Siddham means an um, empirical truth. So empirically the man is many. But Ayuga Pravurtescha, ideologically and cosmologically and ontologically, he is one. That is the karika which has been understood. So, if we take the particular karika into consideration, we have to take the Ayuga Pravurti as well as this particular Yuga Pravurti or Dandva Pravurti. So, this is the way in which Vedadra Maharshi had given more significance to Sankhya. And one more point, our people, when we are saying about this particular evolution given by Vedadra Maharshi, he says that first the plants have come. Then the creatures, realms have come. Then the creatures have come. This particular ideology has been told by Kapila. And Kapila, who is the son of Kardama Prajapati, will be giving a derivative of logic to his mother. So, Devahuti. There, he gives a particular poem. Taranakshi, Vinumu, Achetana Dehamula Kante, Chetana Dehamula Shreshtamu. Andu, Pranavantam Bulai, Sparshagyanam Bukaru, Chetanya Vrukshamula Kante, Kana Rasadya Kalita Chetana Muru, Uttama Muru. Rasadyam Bulu Kalu Vani Kante, Kandhadyana Bukaru, Kari Shrestha Mulu. Vani Kante, Shabda Vedula Guru Shrestulai. Shabda Vidura Kantanu, Sadhru Bhavedra Vaya Sadhu Shrestulu. Vani Kante, Varusa Bhavad Ruttamulu. Vani Kante, Talapa, Chatushpad Radhikulu. Balakani, Vani Kante, Paradvai Mangala Manujur Alakutamulu. This is a very concept. Where in Maharshi says, he starts from the plants, he starts from the worms, he starts from the creatures, he starts from the animals. So the same pattern is told as it is by Kapila. What I want to indicate is, this is the crux of the Sankhya philosophy. And Ishwara Krishna did not actually present the totality of Kapila. And this has been told from Bhagavata. I have collected this material from Bhagavata. In Bhagavata, when Kapila gives to Devahuti, he specifically understands that this is entirely origin. And why we have to know about Sankhya? It's the path of true knowledge. Why we have to know Yoga? It's the path of true action. 
Yes, true action and true knowledge put together becomes yoga for human excellence. A man must control, control and understand the concept of action, the concept of consciousness, the concept of vairagya. These three put together becomes the concept of human excellence and this is possible when we understand the Sankhya philosophy very much. Because by virtue of studying Sankhya philosophy, I got very much benefited and the same benefit I am getting through the concept of Vedadri Maharshi also. Let there be victory for the thought of Vedadri Maharshi. Well, Vedadri Maharshi's concepts are worth practicing as has been uh, said in the Gita, Abhyasayanata Kaunteya Vayagyanata Grihyate. I am sure it will be very helpful for us. From the audience, Hello. Uh, just that my, my question is uh, actually the Sankhya at first, uh, before the Kapila or uh, after Kapila, I don't know. Actually, uh, please clarify my doubt. Uh, first is the Nirishwar Sankhya, then it is, uh, comes into after, it comes after the Seshwar Sankhya. Is it right or not? I will explain you. This particular argument has been made by so many people. And yoga is considered to be Seshwara Sankhya and Sankhya is said to be Nirishwara Sankhya. In yoga there are 26 tattvas which is called as Ishwara. In Sankhya there is Purusha. So this Purusha concept is totally misunderstood by the Karika what I have told you just now. Ayuga Pravurtyascha if you take it then you can understand the Purusha to be one. Yes. It is a monistic theory but not dualistic theory. Yes, yes. In Karika also Ishwara Siddhe there is a Karika Ishwara Siddhe. Ishwara? Asiddhe. Yes, because Ishwara Asiddhe, the entire thing is forming. You have to know by tattvas about the Ishwara Siddhi. That is why Sankhya says, one who knows about the tattvas, then only he can understand the concept of samsara and he can cross the samsara also. Yes. Any, any other question, please? So I request, I really thank all the participants, all the paper presenters here for a wonderful session here. And I also thank the audience, the scholars, the delegates for their uh, views and I am sure we had a very enjoyable session. Now we will all adjourn for our lunch. Thank you very much. <laughs>